this was a long expected feature in iOS 8. Uh, people really thought Apple was uh, going to add this to the iPhone and they were right. This is HealthKit, a little health app down here. And this is what it looks like. We got, first of all, our dashboard, which contains some uh, information that we have inputted uh, and we can view it based on day, week, month, or year. We got these little charts here that will adjust our data. Now, uh, where does this data come from? This comes down uh, here from the My Health tab. So if we tap on that, uh, we have a few different uh, categories here to choose from. So let's just choose all of them. And these are all kinds of things that we can track with this health, health applic application. So I'm just going to go back to my dashboard and tap on one of these cards to real quickly bring one of them up. These are cards. These cards are all available from this list here. Uh, and you can choose uh, you can choose certain things to show on your dashboard, which is this first screen of cards. So uh, this data here uh, that you see on this chart, that was added from this list. And I can add to that data with the add data point. So uh, this is a health rate chart. So it'll ask for the date, time, and my uh, heart rate in beats per minute. So that's how I add data to that. Uh, one of the key features of this app is the sharing of the data. So you can choose certain applications uh, to share the data with, uh, most notably hospitals, obviously. So uh, it seems like Apple is going to be partnering with more and more hospitals uh, and getting them involved into this HealthKit app so that you can really easily share your data, like your heart rate, to uh, other uh, sources like the hospital who can then transmit it to your doctor and then your doctor will be able to communicate back to you based on uh, the data that is in this application. Uh, so let's just uh, browse around on some of the things that you can put into this app. So we have activity count, uh, all of these uh, blood pressure, calcium, calories burned, calories consumed, distance, fiber, heart rate, height, which really doesn't change um, that fast. So I don't know. Uh, oxygen saturation, protein levels, sleep analysis. That's another one that I played around with. You can input the amount of time that you spent in bed and then the amount of time that you went to sleep. Uh, and we'll get to other ways that that can be put in. That seems a little stupid, but I'll go over that in a second. But steps, total fat that you uh, consumed. So those are just a few of the uh, things that you can import data from. Now I'm going to jump over to sources. So it may seem a little stupid to input data into some of those things, especially the sleep. Uh, when you input into the sleep, uh, you choose, whoops, that's not it, add data point. In bed, you put in the time that you were just in bed awake and then the time that you were actually asleep. Well, how do you know when you were, you know, what time you were in bed awake and what time you actually fell asleep? Well, you don't, but there are apps that do that. Those apps can tie into the health app, uh, and that's where the sources tab comes into play. So right now, uh, because we are in uh, beta mode, there are, not, are no applications that work with this yet, uh, but eventually there will be apps like the 24-7 uh, Motion X Sleep application. That's the app I use to track my sleep. Uh, that app will eventually be able to work with the uh, health application and transmit your sleep data, as well as other apps will be able to transmit all kinds of other data to this application. Also, uh, it will work with Bluetooth devices. So if you have like the Jawbone uh, that has, for example, like a pedometer in it, so it'll be able to transmit your steps into this application. And that uh, data will all automatically be transferred in here and you will get uh, automatically these graphs created of your data. And automatically also that data will then be shared with your healthcare provider if you so choose. Now another cool feature is your medical ID. So this is uh, the new medical ID card and this is kind of designed to uh, allow others to kind of help you, especially hospitals and ambulances, uh, to help you uh, more if there is a problem and you're found having some type of medical problem. Uh, now this is in the health kit application, you can edit it in the health application, but 
uh, it's probably most useful uh, if you're having a, an, an actual medical emergency. Uh, the person that finds you is probably not going to know your password, but if they hit the emergency button, where you typically call 911 or some other emergency number, there's a new medical ID button. And if you tap that, it brings up your medical ID. So this includes information uh, like your name, birth date, age, your blood type, whether or not you're an organ donor, your height, weight, and eyes, uh, emergency contact information. So the Huntington lost card is my mother, apparently. Um, medical conditions, medical notes, allergies, medications. So that is some of the information available on your medical ID that uh, is able to be viewed by anyone from the lock screen if you so choose. So that is the HealthKit application. Obviously, there will be much more to come once applications and devices get compatible with the health application and start automatically transmitting data into the health application. And obviously, it will be much more useful once hospitals and healthcare providers will be able to uh, receive information from the health application.